You've seen YouTubers raving about the Steam Deck's gaming experience and it's got you thinking, hey, Steam Deck is Linux gaming, right? Well, not quite. The Linux gaming experience you get on a Steam Deck is fundamentally different from what you'll encounter on a typical Linux desktop distribution. Sure, Steam OS is technically Linux, and you can achieve a similar or even better experience on a desktop, especially with more powerful hardware, but it takes some effort. This video dives into what to expect when venturing into Linux gaming compared to the Steam Deck's experience. For obvious reasons, we'll focus on software aspects and leave the Steam Deck's unique hardware out of the discussion. Typically, Windows gaming handhelds are less user-friendly than desktops. This stems from the limited screen space and Windows reliance on a mouse and keyboard for most tasks. But when comparing a Steam Deck to a Linux desktop PC, the situation flips entirely. Steam OS, by design, ditches the traditional desktop environment, making navigation a breeze using the touchscreen and gamepad buttons. You rarely need to switch to desktop mode for gaming. Furthermore, Valve has put significant effort into creating a user-friendly experience. For instance, after installing the Steam client on a Linux desktop, you'll need to enable Steam Play in the settings to run non-native Windows games. Another example, many distributions encourage Flatpak as the installation method for Steam client. However, by default, Flatpak lacks permission to access external drives. If your games reside on a separate hard drive, you'll need to grant Steam permission through the command line or another Flatpak application called Flatseal. Another thing is Mangahood. If you're familiar with Windows gaming, think of Mangahood as the Linux equivalent of Revatuna statistics server. It's an in-game overlay that tracks crucial performance metrics like frame rates, temperatures, and CPU or GPU usage. Similar to RTSS, Mangahood offers additional features like FPS limiting, benchmark generation, and even enabling VSync for OpenGL and Vulkan games. On Steam OS, Mangahood is conveniently built in. This means you can enjoy a handy overlay monitoring your performance while you game. But on most Linux distributions, you'll need to install Mangahood manually and configure it for each game to function properly. Installation is straightforward. Most major distributions like Debian, Ubuntu, Arch, and Fedora have Mangahood in their official repositories. A simple command gets the job done. However, I recommend installing the latest version from the GitHub release page. The process is equally easy. Download the archive, extract it, and run the installation command. To use Mangahood with Steam games, right-click on a game's properties, navigate to launch options, and type the following. Close the window, and you're set. Limiting FPS requires editing the config file to define the target frame rate and a keyboard shortcut to toggle it. In contrast, Steam OS lets you access quick settings with a single button to adjust these values effortlessly. While the installation process only takes a few minutes, it exemplifies Valve's dedication to streamlining the gaming experience for users. The number of improvements Valve has made to simplify Linux gaming is impressive. One of the most significant is GameScope. It brings numerous benefits to the Steam Deck experience, including frame rate limiting with minimal latency, global upscaling, and easy HDR support. In my opinion, GameScope is also essential for Linux gaming in general. However, on most Linux desktops, you'll need to install it yourself. Ironically, in a desktop environment, GameScope becomes even more valuable. It tackles another critical issue in Linux gaming, alt-tab problems when playing full-screen games. As with Mangahood, you'll need to configure GameScope manually for each game. There are workarounds, though. You can install a Steam OS-like system such as Holo ISO. However, this introduces the hassle of switching between desktop and gaming modes, which isn't ideal for everyday desktop use. Fueled by the Steam Deck's popularity, the number of Steam Deck verified or playable titles is constantly on the rise. 
As of March 2024, the Steam Store boasts over 14,000 such titles, a remarkable achievement compared to just a few years ago. But don't assume all these titles will run flawlessly on your Linux system. Even with a deck verified or playable game, you might encounter occasional issues. That's the nature of PC gaming in general. The culprit often lies in your choice of GPU. Currently, Linux experiences far fewer problems with AMD GPUs like the one in the Steam Deck compared to NVIDIA GPUs. For instance, several games, including Forza Horizon 5 and Horizon Zero Dawn, suffer from random crashes due to an error that took NVIDIA years to fix. AMD users, on the other hand, generally face fewer such issues. Additionally, NVIDIA GPUs have a long-standing struggle with Wayland, a newer display server protocol in Linux. Another reason SteamOS appeals to Linux newcomers is its read-only file system. This significantly reduces the risk of users accidentally breaking the system, making the gaming experience more akin to a console. It's also why SteamOS relies heavily on Flatpak for installing third-party applications. This approach acts as a double-edged sword. While Flatpak offers a user-friendly experience, and I personally like it, it also restricts user freedom over the device. If you want to leverage the Steam Deck's full potential as a desktop PC, disabling read-only becomes necessary. With a traditional Linux desktop distribution, you're not limited to Flatpak for most installations. You can modify system files to suit your needs. However, this freedom comes at a cost. The increased risk of breaking your system if you're not comfortable with Linux commands. Personally, I don't favor the read-only approach of Steam OS. I enjoy the feeling of control over my device. The Steam Deck's appeal to many Linux users stems from its foundation on Arch Linux. The read-only file system prevents users from taking advantage of the powerful package manager Pacman and the AUR Arch user repositories for software management. Even after disabling read-only mode, any software you install might be wiped out during the next Steam OS update. This can be problematic. As of March 2024, Linux holds over 4% of the global desktop OS market share. This milestone signifies tens of millions using Linux daily for their computing needs. It also translates to a thriving Linux gaming community. While Steam Deck users technically fall under this umbrella, the experience between SteamOS and a traditional Linux desktop distribution can be vastly different. It's important to acknowledge Valve's contributions to the Linux gaming landscape, but achieving a SteamOS-like experience on a desktop requires additional effort.